Hi everyone, I'm Justin Hattendorf. Um, I lead the product design team at Entopology. And today I'm going to show you an example of how I am combining perforation, uh, texture, and breaking into multiple parts just through using Entop geometry. Um, so for this example, um, I started with bringing in a CAD body. Um, so I brought in something like this. Uh, you can see it's been defeatured a little bit here. Um, and that's so that we can build the features that we want, the details that we want directly in NTOP. Um, so we'll start with this. And the first thing we're going to do is convert that to an NTOP body. Paper. The um, implicit body geometry, um, you can see, has taken the CAD surfaces and has made a new solid out of it. And this solid is an implicit representation. So you can see that it's not only a solid here, um, it has a field baked into it as well. So you can see that um, has the field extending both inside and outside of this object. So we can use it for all sorts of things inside of it. Um, next step after converting to implicit is I'm going to apply texture to it. So I've decided to go with a, a triangle wave texture here, which basically just displaces the surface of the geometry. So you can see that I've applied texture just on the top, um, not on the bottom. And that's so that when I build up my Bluetooth speaker example, um, I can ensure that the bottom is the original surface, so nice and smooth, and the top is where I can apply some texture and some preparation. So if I do another section cut, um, you can see it's still solid, um, but we have some displacement just at the top. So you can see the triangle texture coming through. Um, so the way that this is working is I have my original speaker volume um, and I have my wave height. And that wave height is actually a variable down here. So you can see that it's actually based on this split in plane here. So what that will do is ensure that I have texture only above and not below this plane here. So the next thing I'm going to do is then shell it. So by shelling it, can use it for all sorts of things. I can basically prepare it for, for uh, injection molding. I can uh, break it into multiple parts. Um, but I use this as the basis of the model, just so I can have a nice even offset all the way through. So section the can, and you can see that this is, I mean, even five millimeters inward all the way through. So, I did this step before breaking this into two halves. Um, like I know that what I know that the top I want this extra perforated surface and this bottom to be nice and smooth. Um, I did the shell beforehand to make sure that the two are aligned. That's um, even. The next step would be actually to break this into two. So I have the shell A, which is using the same exact split plane as before right here, um, but it's using the clearance block to ensure that there's always um, a gap between my cut plane and the original surface. And then I'll make sure that I can specify my tolerances so that these two pieces fit together. So I have my, my sur first surface here, and my second surface here. Um, and this is pretty nice because from then on, I can just work with the surface that I want to detail. So uh, for the rest of the design, I, I'm just going to focus on shell A, um, the top surface here. Um, so the next step is just defining the perforation pattern. So this is the fun part. Um, you can see that we are taking a TV mess structure and doing a couple operations to then control the size. Uh, and to, I'm using this to put some things in it. So as you can see here, um, the TV mess structure is I'm using the diamond body structure. And this is basically just a three-dimensional foam. Um, I want to convert this instead of three-dimensional foam, I want it to be two-dimensional perforation. So I used something called a remap block here um, to keep the X and Y the same, but then just use one slice location. So that'd be basically, for example, taking just one cross-section of it. So you can see that the CPMS structure goes from diamond to stripes to diamonds to stripes. It's a pretty dynamic texture that I can use for all sorts of things, but I'm just going to use it to basically make a diamond texture here. Um, 
So you can see that after offsetting and bounding it again, I've taken that three-dimensional foam and turned it into a bunch of extrusions here. Um, these extrusions I'm going to use to poke holes directly into the surface. So you can see that all I have to do is do a Boolean and subtract. And then you can see just by subtracting, I've poked a bunch of holes in this. And you can see it runs super smoothly, super quickly. Um, and then I didn't have any issues with the texture that's combining with it, or like the, the triangle displacement that's combining with it. And you can see it's getting nice and even and off into this plane. So that we're still meeting this original CAD surface that we brought in. Um, but we're not going to be we won't have any new texture interfering with where that, those two surfaces meet. So the real reason I use the teeth and mess is that you can take advantage of all of the different cross sections of teeth and mess. So you can see that by varying where the, where the um, teeth and mess is sliced or sectioned, um, we can change the, the pattern entirely. So you can see here, that I just changed the location to one instead of eight. You can see this went from a top pattern to a stripe pattern. And as you can see, it still has the taper. There's, there's no conflict of the edges here. Um, it still has the original texture. It just changed the perforation pattern. So instead of the holes, I have a bunch of slices. So I can do a diagonal. I can do um, the other diagonal right here. You can see I just caught that against the grain here. You can see it's a pretty different effect than looking before. Um, but it's the same, basically it's the same, same edges, same guides. You can use the same geometry to do all these things. It's just changing the style or effect of this perforation texture. Maybe it's based on like an aesthetic you're trying to go for, maybe it's based on performance. Um, it could be, it's up to you. Um, and Pretty exciting because it's super quick to just switch and update this from all sorts of different points. So. Cool. And you can see that this perforation pattern is solid just like before. Um, it's nice, even extrusions all the way through this. Plane. Now, that's all I have for you today. Um, in my next example, I'll go through um, an example of applying a logo to this texture. So basically, yeah, with, with Gison Plus is solid, um, we can make sure, make sure that everything is solid no matter what. So it's super easy to combine solids. So in my next example, I'll show you how to combine a perforated texture with a solid and top logo that I've imported. Thanks.